Hey, good day, fellow deal makers. Welcome to the Deal Scout. On this show, we talk about deals all day long. The mission and purpose of this show is to put deals and deal makers together. If you hear about a deal on the show and you would like to learn more, you can look at the show notes for this episode and you'll be able to find the contact information of our guest. Our guests are made up of deal makers ranging from I talked with, spoke with someone who, you know, did lemonade stands all the way to special purpose acquisitions and politicians and all sorts of wild deals in between. So uh, if you're working on a deal, you could always head over to thedealscout.com, fill out a quick form and talk about your deal on this show. So with that, we're going to say today, you know, I do this for a living and I still stumble. Today, we're going to talk about the deals of film and investing in film with Mr. James Hilton. James, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Josh. It's uh, really fun to be here. Absolutely. Now, uh, where's home for you guys? So we're in Boston. In Boston. All right. So first of all, I'm wearing a, a Boston hat for you guys, and uh, you know this is yeah. The, we appreciate that. This is the I wanted you to feel at home. This is the Boston uh, one of the Boston hats or whatever. It's not the Scally hat. Those things are really nice though. But uh, yeah, yeah, totally. It's a nice one. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's always a good way to start out an interview is compliment the host. So uh, we're off to a great start, James. Um, tell us about who you are and what you do. Sure. So um, as you mentioned, my name is James Hilton. I'm uh, the co-founder um, and CEO of Expressify. And we're an equity funding platform for film and television projects. And, uh, you know, I'll just, you know, I'll just mention, you know, in film and television, it's uh, it's kind of an animal unto itself. And uh, getting a film funded, you know, is one of the largest obstacles that filmmakers have, um, you know, regardless of talent, you know, Spike Lee, for example, um, when he was out of NYU, it took him about four years to get his first deal funded. Um, and he spent the majority of that time fundraising, you know, and obviously, once you've got a really successful feature or two under your belt, you know, it's a lot easier. There's more options. Um, but uh, but even so, you know, there's still, um, you know, there's still a need for funding in that area. And so we created Expressify to really streamline that process. And so we, uh, you know, we find great great deals. You know, we, we get a lot of submissions to our site. We have relationships with producers and, you know, producers obviously, you know, get hammered with a ton of deals as well, you know, just projects that are looking for funding. And so there's kind of a natural curation process that happens through that. And once a producer attaches themselves to a project, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, pretty high tier at that point, you know, if it's an experienced producer and they've chosen to take that on, um, we look for projects that have talent already attached. You know, we like to see names, at least one that's recognizable that has decided to associate themselves with the project. Um, we do internal script coverage. So we'll actually uh, have a few people on our team, you know, read the script and provide thorough analysis, you know, to make sure it's a really good, you know, great script and storyline, which is a prerequisite. You know, it's kind of like the foundation of the project. Everything is built on a script. And, uh, and so, you know, we also like to see that a project has distribution lined up. Um, that's not always the case. You know, that's an area that we're actually building our business to assist with projects getting distribution. Um, but distribution obviously means potential sales. You know, a, a project is going to get funded and get in front of eyes, which is the most important thing. And, uh, you know, on the distribution side, you know, if you're, if you're going out there as a filmmaker, the challenge that you'll have is you, you'll go to distributors to try to sell your project and they'll ask if you have financiers, but then you'll go to financiers and they'll ask if you have distribution, you know, and so it's kind of a teeter totter where uh, they're both looking for each other. And so we try to create this common, you know, central marketplace where we can find really great promising projects from emerging filmmakers and pair them with distribution and financing. And so that's what we're, that's what we're building. Yeah, it's like which came first, the the distribution or the investor, the financing, right? So, mm -hmm. what, explain what is the traditional route, right? So, let's just say me, you, and Spike Lee graduated NYU, and yep. we've got a, we've got this idea for you know for a film, and mm -hmm. now but we got to raise some money. Yeah, like what does that process typically look like in Hollywood? So usually a filmmaker will start with shorts um, because if you haven't got anything to show your you know chops, you, you really need that um, to, to get anyone to listen to you. 
And so usually filmmakers will, will start with shorts, you know, at least one or two. Some of them do many shorts before doing a feature. Um, shorts are actually a really great way to prove a concept, not only with the filmmaker, but also with uh, a story. Um, like we have one uh, filmmaker in our slate who uh, came out with a short that was kind of a proof of concept for her feature. And when we started talking to her, she had uh, just about 2 million views on her short on YouTube. And, uh, and then, you know, in the time since we started talking to her, she just surpassed 4 million views. You know, so that's really great. You know, it, it shows that there's traction with the idea and the filmmaker. Uh, but even just showing chops, you know, it doesn't even necessarily need to, to get a ton of views. It just needs to be, you know, a great piece of work. And, um, you know, once, once that, you know, has been uh, completed, you have a portfolio of some shorts to show. Um, the most important thing is a really vetted, you know, thorough script, you know, that that's ready, really ready to go and uh, get investment and, and go to production. And the script has to really be developed. The project has to have some talent attached. And that's definitely a challenging thing to do. But it's a critical, you know, first step to raising money. Um, you know, so that's where a lot of the deals get started. Um, and so once, you know, once they come to us right now, we're really focused on on projects that, you know, upon funding are ready to go, you know, and they're ready to shoot. And a lot of the attachments can happen very quickly. You know, if you're looking for a full cast, you know, it, it can happen very quickly once the project is funded. So we look for, you know, one or two at least known actors, actresses that are attached as well as a strong team on the back end. Okay. So, I mean, this is an absolute process. And mm -hmm. a part of the deal is you gotta have someone who, you know, the, the initial person has to have some chops. They have to have some proof in the game that they can put together a story. Mm -hmm. They could get people interested in it, right? Four million views. That's a lot of people saying, hey, this is actually interesting. And at mm -hmm. that point you start to look for, you, you write out the full script, you start to look for the talent the people who are going to be in it try to get a big name because that could attract more eyeballs they're they're raving fans and and also credibility and then yeah. you go to investors film financiers and you go hey this is what we've got we got you know josh on the line or we got brad on the line whatever the case may be let's do a deal right yeah absolutely okay. now you mentioned yeah. now on when you see the credits like mm -hmm. the credits sometimes now take 30 minutes, right? And then yeah. they put they put eggs and bloopers and, and all this stuff within the credits. So you actually pay attention, and you sit there for it. But when mm. you see the credits go and you see titles like producer, executive producer and such like yeah. that, you, you mentioned those from the beginning, what are the roles of the money people? What are the roles and the titles of the deal makers in a film? Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times people that are involved on the financing side that they'll, you know, sometimes have just the title producer and the producers are doing a number of things, one of which is raising money or looking for distribution. Um, a lot of times executive producers are, are more on the business side. They might be an investor in the project or they might be, you know, connecting it to money or distribution. So executive producer is a title that we look at a lot of times for prospective financiers on the platform. Um, you know, it uh, it is exciting to be an executive producer on a project. You you know, a lot of times you get to visit the set. You know, you you get to have that role on the project. You're you're kind of the uh, facilitator of making the project happen, and um, you know, it's a great experience. Got it. So you guys had this idea. Why did you have the idea about Expressify? And like, mm -hmm. tell me about the background that even led you into film. Yeah. So Dean and I, um, my partner, Dean, is uh, um, we, we've been working together for several years um, and we uh, we have an expertise in tech and user experience and user interface. And uh, we've been working on Expressify for a few years, you know, starting with the tech and then uh, moving on to the you know community building. Um, but what we noticed is, you know, in general, there's a lot of innovation happening in funding. Like you see a lot of funding platforms popping up, you know, especially with the Jobs Act and uh, an opportunity for both accredited and non-accredited investors to participate. Um, but most of the focus has been on startups. Um, and there's some platforms that are pretty broad and they do include film, but it's only one piece of what they do. Um, but evaluating a film project or a television project is entirely different than evaluating a traditional startup. And, uh, you know, if you look at content, the print, the pandemic showed us that content is, you know, is in shortage. You know, there, there may be a lot of 
content out there, but great content is is hard to come by and uh, streaming platforms are really competing over it. And over the next 10 years, it's projected that video streaming will uh, do about 10 X in terms of the size of the industry. And so we think that, you know, finding film projects and television projects that are really promising is a great opportunity, you know, for an alternative investment. And, uh, and so that's what, you know, really got us into it. It's, uh, it's fun, you know, supporting the content that we consume and finding, you know, finding great stories to tell that have been traditionally more difficult to get out there. But why film, right? So you guys have technology background, you and Dean are getting together. You guys did a lot of work together. And one day you said, let's build a, you know, a platform that helps, you know, finance films. Why did you choose film? Why not real estate? Why not? cool hats why why not anything else why film yeah. i think film is is you know inspirational it's educational it's entertaining you know film is something that we all consume it's ever growing and there's an in demand you know there's a constant demand for content um and so i think film is a, is a great opportunity that has really been underserved you know there's there's a ton of funding platforms popping up for startups and even you know real estate there's a lot of uh, cool innovative stuff happening in real estate but uh but this just looked to us to be a really underserved uh, market where uh if we could prove you know prove the concept with film and uh nail that you know nail that process down um it could be really scalable and successful so that's that's really what drew us to film um specifically um you know i'll also mention uh you know film Film is something that, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's kind of new streaming platforms popping up, you know, all the time. Um, there's, you know, there's new money coming into film, but it's something that's kind of distant for most people. Like most people don't know where to start if they're interested in even dabbling in film, you know, or, you know, all of us consume content, but having the opportunity to co-invest in a project alongside, say, like, actors that we're you know familiar with and that we see it's kind of exciting you know and it's uh it's an attractive space um it's obviously you know a very uh a very challenging space you know to get into um because a lot of it is relationship driven and it's you know done over email and you have to know the right people and with film you really need to get exposed to a lot of projects to find you know the most promising ones that'll be the least risky and uh and so we we decided to to really find you know great opportunities that you know are based on a, a large number of projects that we're seeing getting down to the most promising ones so that people can have a good place to start yeah super interesting so as you guys are building this out right a part of your process is taking a look at and seeing if the the story is mm -hmm. good the script is yep. good and then also is does the writer have chops do they have distribution lined up and, mm -hmm. you know, maybe do they have some money lined up mm -hmm. when it comes to distribution? So it kind of needs those three legged tripod, right? For it to yeah. get its start. Um, when you're looking at a script, what are some things that you look for um, to make it good or bad? Because, I mean, there's there's some movies that were incredible. And then there were some flops that everybody thought was going to do good. How do you know you yeah. got a good one? So you, you don't necessarily know. It's never a, a certainty. You know, the, the most important thing is that the uh, that there's there's a lot, there's actually a, a point system. We look at scripts from from about eight different perspectives. You know, the pace of the story, um, the character development, um, you know, the the overall plot. There's uh, there's actually a scoring system that we use that's fairly industry standard for evaluating a script. You know, one of the biggest red flags right off the bat is that the script hasn't been polished, you know, even though, uh, you know, spelling or grammar issues or, you know, things like that are easily fixable and don't necessarily tie directly to, you know, the storyline. Um, those types of things are uh, kind of a red flag because it shows that the script just hasn't been developed enough, you know, to to be ready for the screen. And so um, we evaluate scripts. We tried to get a few different perspectives. Um, so at least, you know, two or three people doing coverage on the script so that we can see that there's consensus. And, uh, and there's some scripts where, you know, you, you read it and it's just bad, you know, and it just needs a lot of work because it's just not, you know, it, it isn't something that you can see um, being enjoyable to watch or it's, you know, very cliche or, you know, ordinary but there's others that really are unique concepts you know and they and they really kind of you keep turning the page 
like one of our one of our scripts you know in, in most cases to get an attached you know an attached known you know actor on a project usually need to have some kind of funding you know development funding to get their name attached you know you'll you'll give them some kind of fee just to get like a letter of intent for example but uh one of our projects um actually got uh, attachments without a fee just purely based on the script and the relationships with the producers and so, you know, that's a great sign. Um, it, it shows that the actors are really interested in the story. You know, they think that it's, uh, you know, a great project. And so that that certainly um, helps, you know, a lot in terms of identifying a good project. So distribution. So one is you guys have a point system when you're taking a look at how many scripts a month is your team reviewing to find out which ones go on your portal? Mm -hmm. So we get a lot of submissions to the site. Um, most of our most of our uh, projects come from producers that we work with, and on average, each producer, you know, if they're known in the industry, is getting at least twenty to fifty scripts per day. Um, you know, so it's just uh, it's unmanageable. You know, there's oh there's so much out there. Um, and, uh, and there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of junk out there too. You know, it's like maybe projects that could be great if they were more well-developed, but they're just not ready for prime time, you know? So, so part of what we're actually working on for our producers is um, a process for dealing with these submissions on a scalable basis. You know, it's just not, it's way more than one person can review. And so, uh, you know, we, we are actively working on a system for looking at that many projects at kind of a very high level and then you know figuring out which ones need to bubble to the top to look more closely at and so uh you know we we haven't uh, brought that offering out yet but that's something that we're really excited about you know further developing and bringing to our producers because you know the most important thing is is finding the gems you know and it uh the producers are just as interested in finding the gems and in, in the scripts that they're getting as you know as anyone else it's just very challenging to do it yeah Holy moly. So I don't think I could ever be a producer in the, in this, in that world because getting 20 to 50 a day. Yeah. And then it would take me probably a month to read one. <laughs> you got to really yeah. take up speed reading to, to be good at this job. What, yeah. When you find a producer that has latched on to a, a project, right? Mm -hmm. They're going, Hey, this is the, I've read a lot of them. This is the diamond. They come to you and they go, we're going to raise some money. Let's see if you boys could go raise some money with us. Right. Is, is that how the process goes? The producer yeah, comes to you and cases, says, I need yeah. money. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. What size money, what size raise do you think you guys are going to uh, go after as you guys are building and growing this? So the projects on our platform range right now from uh, 500 K on the low end. Um, to uh you know 10 million on the high end um however you know really established filmmakers you know with uh really promising projects the budgets you know can go to 20 to 50 million um on the independent side you know obviously big blockbusters from the large studios can be you know 200 million or more um but that's you know that's kind of the most common budget sizes for the independent space you know 500k on the low end is uh, is really common for like horror projects, like grassroots horror projects, you know, uh, paranormal activity, which uh, I'm not sure if you remember that one. Um, yeah. That was a that was actually I think it was like a fourteen thousand dollar budget, and the filmmaker made it in his own house, you know, which uh, you know is is you know there's a whole range of these projects. Um, Blair Witch Project was a similar type of thing where it was a really low budget project, but it just took off, you know, virally. Those are obviously outliers. Um, but, uh, you know, we've found that, um, you know, there is definitely a market for low budget horror movies. Um, and uh, and so that's, you know, that's a, a place that a lot of our financiers and producers will play in. Um, but, uh, you know, the average independent film that we are really looking to focus on has a budget anywhere between two and ten million. Yeah, I just looked this up while you were chatting. Blair Witch Project, I think their budget was like 35 to 50K or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then I think they pulled in 193 million globally. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about yeah, the not, investments. Not a bad ROI. <laughs> not a bad R yeah, not a bad yeah. ROI, right? Return on investing in films. Um, when it comes to films though, it could have been a flop. It could have yep. not got distribution. It, you know, it was the first of its kind and it did really yep. well. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to investing in film, what kind of people 
invest in film from your perspective? What, you know, we, we see the executive producers and they have all these relationships in Hollywood, but what mm. about the normal people that, you know, normal, normal accredited investors that you guys are having conversations? What do, mm. what, what kind of investments do they make? Yeah. So it's definitely not, you know, it's not the norm, you know, to have that kind of crazy return, you know, uh, what, what we try to, uh, what we try to focus on is, uh, is having a good slate of projects that are all very promising and have certain things in line so that uh, when investors look at them, you know, they're, they're in line with what they're expecting to find, you know, the, one of the, one of the strategies that most investors will, uh, take is is investing in a slate of projects you know you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket so they'll usually usually diversify across a number of projects um, because it is true you know some of them uh, some of them even though they look like they have everything going for them they may not be as successful as you're hoping and then on the other side you know some of them will be breakouts you know so it's kind of like a vc model where you know you uh, you diversify um, but, uh, but there's a lot more to it. You know, the, uh, the, the, when people have decided that they want to invest in film, it's a very difficult thing to start with if you haven't been in there. And, uh, and even if you are doing it with that number of scripts that you're getting, you know, curation of projects is, uh, is, is definitely a lot of value, you know, because it uh, just makes it easier to find good projects. And it's, it's always better to co-invest in a project than do it alone, you know? So that's uh, that's what we try to do. We try to you know pool multiple investors into a project um, on each one, um, you know. So in in general, you know that that sort of thing can mitigate that risk. Um, but we also you know time is money, and uh, and so we try to consolidate all of the materials into one place so they can make a decision as quickly as possible. You know, so the uh, the script, you know, the the budget, the distribution projections, um, log lines, trailers, you know, everything that you would expect to find in a particular movie deal, we bring into one place so they can make a, you know, make a decision on a project basis very quickly. Now, have you seen, um, as people are, you know, looking at investing in films and, you know, they'll get their first couple rounds and they'll go, let's produce this. They put together a trailer to see mm -hmm. if what kind of interest people get. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they start shopping this around like, Hey, I got, Josh Wilson and Brad Pitt, they're going to co-star in something and they're going to, you know, run this out. Is, is that how it typically works where they'll, they'll kind of package that initial stuff together or they just go, Hey, we, we're going to bet on this. Let's roll with it all the way through. How does that typically work? And the reason can, I'm asking, let, let me, let me yeah. pose it with this. The reason I'm asking is some of these films, you know, let's just say a $10 million independent film, right? With let's say we get a big name going the distance and hoping that a lot of people really go for it is, is risky, right? Just like mm. all investments, but how, how, do, how do you mitigate some of that risk on the front end? What have you guys seen? So the more, you know, the more traction that a project has, the better, you know, um, it's, it's one thing to develop, you know, to, to invest in a script that is just a script. And it's another to invest in a, you know, in a project that already has attached talent on it. Mm. Uh, and it's another to invest in a project that already has attached talent and already has some funding, you know, towards it. And so these are just different levels that investors can get into a project. And, uh, you know, our goal is to match financiers with the type of projects that they're looking to get involved in. You know, so you might have people that want to be more of a developer, you know, they may want to find a great script you know, that has some traction, but get in early, you know, and help that project get to the next level before, you know, full fundraise. And then there are, there are other projects where, uh, you know, it's in post development, for example. So we have one that uh, has already shot all of its principal photography and, uh, and they need money for post production and for, um, a, to cover a bridge loan, you know, and that's, that's a great, you know, that's a great polar opposite end of the spectrum because, you know, there's there's very little risk of it not being completed. Um, you know, the, the the project is already shot, and so uh, the turnaround time, you know, to delivery is much lower than uh, that of a you know project that's in pre-production. And so, you know, our goal is to align you know align investors with what they're looking for. You know, some people just want to provide finishing funds, and that's you know that's a great opportunity. Others want to be you know earlier and more involved, and so. You know, it, uh, it's just a matter of what, you know, what they want to get involved in. I have never invested in a film. I have been in some like D rated films, right? Like some super budget, like horror stuff back in the day. Yeah. 
but I have no experience investing in, in film. However, investing on the business side, right? I look at the different stages of film, right? So you might have a good script. You can invest in the script, but it's almost like a, an idea. Yeah. You know, they built out the prototype and then you might have some that has some talent attached to it, right? So that could be like the founding team. You got a good management team. You got some good jockeys running the, the, the deal. And okay, it's, it, it's a little less risky now that we know this management team has produced some great movies. And then you get some funding. You're like, okay, now they've got some traction. They got some runway. Yeah. They can do this. And then you look if they got they got a little bit of distribution or they've mm -hmm. got eyeballs on it. Now it's it's just the different stages and the different taste for the investors. Did I get that right? Yeah. Or did I miss anything? Yeah, totally. 100 percent. OK, so in terms of let's just say we go the distance, we all invest in some money. The show's a hit. Yay, mm -hmm. the greatest showman. And we we have a blast and we're like, OK, how the heck do we get paid, right? You got to pay the actors. You got to pay the film guy. You got to, you got to pay all these people. How does the yeah. money chop up? What do the term sheets look like? Yeah. So typically every project will have a budget, you know, and it's a pretty detailed budget. There'll be a top sheet so you can get a high level glance, you know, but, but ultimately there will be a very thorough line budget that breaks the entire budget down into how, you know, how it will, uh, how it will all be financed. And, uh, you know, what will typically happen, you know, to be honest with you, every every deal can be very different, you know, and that's that's something that's kind of uh, unique to this space because you know you might get money from uh, from debt or you might get money from distributors. Sometimes distributors will pre-buy content, which can finance the film. You know, sometimes you'll get a minimum guarantee from a distributor. Usually, the answer is some mixture of equity and debt, you know, and distribution. And so, you know, there's a few different ways that you're getting to that that overall budget. Um, but on the equity side, you know, we we try to be pretty in line with industry standards in terms of what financiers would expect and what um, you know creators and filmmakers would expect. And so the typical terms, you know, that you're looking at there are uh, we 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 go for a minimum return to the investors of one twenty percent before the the filmmakers uh, participate in the revenue. And then uh, we we have a 50-50 split thereafter between our investor pool and the and the creators. Okay, let me make sure I understand this. Yeah. Investors put in a million bucks, right? Mm -hmm. The show blows it out of the water and everybody's everybody's paid, you know, so th they get 120% of that back, right? Let's just say yeah. it, it blew it out of the water and it was a profitable show. Mm -hmm. After you know, after it's all said and done, seven million has been paid out. There's three million still left on the table. They mm -hmm. get fifty percent of that carry. Yeah, so that goes to the uh, to the to, to the SPV, which is the group of investors from Expressify. Copy that. So you guys create up an SPV for each individual project. You guys raise yeah. the capital through that SPV, and those are the terms. Ah, interesting. Exactly. And if it flops, you guys get a hard copy of a DVD in your name right like i yeah. mean it, it's just like business yeah. and anything could be a great investment and it may not um yeah exactly you know it, it's kind of an interesting space because you know there's a lot of people who um both invest in the arts as well as you know there's a lot of people who donate to the arts for example so a lot of financiers will uh, will look at it that way you know it's 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 financing something that uh that is you know expression and uh and art you know but it's also you know you're expecting to to do well with it, you know, you're not just putting it in because you're not expecting to make something in return. That obviously happens, but a big, uh, a, gr a big part of it also is the experience of doing it. You know, and it's it's a really unique experience to be an executive producer on a project, and uh, you know, and, and being one of the supporters of of the content. Yeah, if I were investing in films, the thing that I would look through is I'd I'd want to see I'd want to see names, right? Like. And it might be just an investor bias or a, a Hollywood bias, but you know, seeing a big name for me means that this has a better likelihood of succeeding. Mm -hmm. However, that means you got to pay them a lot more. So you're, if you're looking for more of a startup feel, you invest maybe in someone who might be not known or an up and coming person. Now, when it comes to like the person you said, now you you just nodded your head yes or no. Yeah. Explain why that happened. Yeah. There's people listening into the podcast. I want to I want them to pick up on that too. Why was yeah. that a so? Maybe so. Yeah. So so you know it's always better you know in terms of uh, 
you know, in terms of a promise, you know, a project having good promise, it's always better to have recognizable talent. There's always exceptions to any rule, you know, like, like Squid Game, for example, was wildly successful. And most people in the US, you know, didn't recognize any of the cast that was in Squid Game, um, you know, and it, it was uh, it was a foreign foreign uh, production. Um, you know, but that being said, those are outliers, you know, just like we were talking about Blair Witch Project and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Paranormal Activity, you know, there wasn't a lot of recognizable talent at all, you know, in, in either of those, but they were wildly successful. So it definitely happens. Mm -hmm. um, but it's always, you know, really great to see known recognizable talent on a project, you know, even, um, even having like one or two really recognizable names goes a long way, you know, and you can definitely fill out your cast with additional talent that's less recognizable, um, but it goes, it goes a long way. And, uh, you know, in, in my opinion, it would be better to have a more recognizable name attached or two than to, you know, than to just go like a mid-level. Um, but, uh, you know, but that being said, you know, great, great films get made, you know, all the time with, with different levels of recognizable talent. Um, and it's just a matter of kind of setting yourself up for success in the best possible way. All right, you are not allowed to say Blair Witch. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the other one? Paranormal Activity. Paranormal Activity. And I think we mentioned one more. You're not allowed to mention those because we already mentioned it. Yep. If you could go back in time and invest in a film on mm -hmm. in the early stage, which film would you invest in? And it could be because of the return or because yeah. it meant something important to you. Yeah. So I'll tell you right now, uh, I would uh, leap at the opportunity to invest in Star Wars. Oh, and... Yeah. Uh, you okay. know, anyone would, but but Star Wars is a cool example because if you go back to when Star Wars first happened, I don't remember specifically what the number was, but that that project was pitched to a number of studios that turned it down uh, before they eventually got some funding. And, uh, you know, original ideas like that are are risky, um, but they're they're also, you know, hard to come by, um, like great original ideas. You know, if you were trying to pitch a Star Wars now, it would probably be, you know, even harder to get it funded now than it was when they were first starting out. And obviously that has become a wildly successful franchise, um, you know, but it, it all starts with the first, you know, and, and that, you know, that was kind of a vision, you know, and he, he already had kind of an entire storyline, you know, mapped out for what he wanted to do with it. Um, but that, you know, that, that for sure, you know, just to pick, to pick one, but, you know, other, there's plenty of examples of, of original, you know, original stories, you know, like Home Alone, for example, you know, is a, is a unique, it's, it's a holiday, it's a holiday project, you know, it's a, it's a Christmas movie. And that certainly, uh, certainly helps in terms of marketability, you know, yeah. like Christmas movies are always, you know, are always in demand because, you know, it's nice to have fresh movies in the holidays, but, you know, Home Alone was pretty unique as well, you know, when it was pitched. And I don't know if you knew this. Uh, I actually I actually learned this from uh, watching something on Netflix uh, about the origin story of Home Alone. But uh, they actually lost funding. They were ready to go. They were they were shooting in Chicago. And they had the whole thing set up and they lost funding. So this guy, one of the producers was going around the whole building telling everyone to, you know, to fold up, put everything away, you know, we just lost funding, you know, the project's not going to happen. But then about 20 minutes later, they, uh, they got funding from 20th Century Fox. Um, so it just changed studios. And so the, the a second guy was following the first guy around the whole building, you know, telling everyone, no, we're back on, you know, get everything <laughs> in, out of round. the boxes. Yeah. <laughs> Holy moly. How interesting. And that movie became uh, wildly successful. Yeah. And uh, the right studio picked it up and they did OK. Yeah. Um, so as you guys are building this, um, you guys are are building this organization. You guys are going to build it, grow it. What's a what are some milestones that you're hoping to hit in terms of films financed or dollars amount? Mm -hmm. Like what are some of your personal goals for that? Yeah. So our, uh, you know, we, we only launched to our uh, community of finance tiers with our first slate of projects about a month ago, and we've already got about 400k of expressed interest across uh, eight different projects, which we're thrilled with, you know, um, that type of momentum right out of the gate. We haven't even really, uh, you know, gone 
um, gone big in terms of publicity or, or, you know, or marketing yet, you know, that's all grassroots uh, community development and getting the projects in front of uh, financiers. And so uh, our goal is to, uh, is to fund our first project. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're looking to do that in the next 30 to 60 days. Um, and, uh, and in general, we're looking to ramp up our deal flow, you know, to, uh, to a consistently funding one a month, you know, once, uh, once we're up and running, you know, in a, in a more scaled fashion. Um, you know, we, uh, we obviously have some, you know, some goals that are longer term and growth goals, but, uh, you know, we, we try to take it one step at a time, once one milestone at a time. And, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're really thrilled to get the traction towards some of those projects that we've already seen. For uh, people who want to learn more, what's a good place to connect with you and explore Expressify? So uh, we have a, a live site they can go to, expressify.io. So it's X-P-R-E-S-S-I-F-Y dot I-O. And uh, we actually have, uh, when you first land on the page, we've got a nice, easy uh, email inbox. You know, they can put in their email to sign up. And we do have uh, an evaluation process and a, um, you know, an approval process for financiers, um, but we're doing that pretty expediently. And so right now we're uh, focused entirely on accredited investors, um, preferably ones who already have experience investing in film, um, but uh, not necessarily limited to that. Um, and so, you know, what we try to, you know, propose to the filmmakers is that we're uh, not only curating projects for the financiers, but we're also curating financiers for the projects. And so, you know, we're looking for people who are, uh, who are serious, you know, about uh, looking at projects and, uh, and uh, supporting them financially. And so, you know, that's, that's the best place they can go to start is uh, expressify.io. Cool. And that contact information will be in the show notes below. James, there's probably a question during this interview that I screwed up and did not ask you about investing in films. What question mm -hmm. is that? Um, that's, that's a good question. <laughs> um, you know, I would say, let me think about that for a second. Um, And Dean's right next you know, to you. So if you're yeah, like, hey, Dean, I, what question should I, I ask? I would this? say, you know, I, I would say a good a good question is is most you know historically most films um, we've known you know known their success through theatrical release, um, and video streaming is becoming more prevalent. And so you know, I would ask what what the future is of of consumption. You know, are people going to be going to uh, you know the movie theaters to watch movies? Um, you know, is video streaming playing a role? You know, what's what's happening there? And uh, you know, I obviously don't have a crystal ball. You know, to to know you know, exactly what's going to happen in the future. But one thing is abundantly clear, video streaming is definitely here to stay. It's here to grow. And theatrical, you know, is historically would have looked, you know, you would have looked at theatrical releases as, you know, a conservative, a conservative means of getting film out there. And I would say it's actually more risky now because you're not sure what the future of uh, film releases and theatrical is. And uh, video streaming is rapidly becoming not not a supplemental distribution channel, but you know the distribution channel, um, and it's expected to do about a 10x over the next 10 years. You know, in terms of uh, in terms of that consumption, and sure. so you know there's there's a lot of differences between the two. Um, but I think you know what uh, what we try to do on Expressify is maximize distribution, um, and we uh, are partnering with uh, producers who have worked with sales agents. We're partnering with distribution platforms, and uh, theatrical is still an important part of pushing a movie out. You know, in many cases, you can't actually qualify for awards like an Oscar, for example, if you if you don't have a theatrical release. Um, but uh, you know distribution is so important you know there's all all ways all different ways of distributing content you know including like you know airlines you know and and getting into the uh airline entertainment systems you know domestic distribution foreign distribution um all different various streaming channels subscription based advertising based and so you know the uh the future is definitely in in video streaming and in advertising on demand and subscription based platforms yeah, super interesting. Uh, I've got me, wife, three kids. If we want to go out the movie, just cost alone, right? Like I love movies. First of all, I have a nine, five and a two year old. So if there's really a movie I want to see, the kids aren't coming. So then I got to get babysitter. And then by the time it's a couple hundred bucks, which is awesome. 
or I could rent two movies, put one movie on in the room for the kid on the demand, right? The kids could be watching mm-hmm. movies in the next room. Me and the wife could watch a movie and uh, we can uh, also drink and not drive. So I think streaming is definitely the future of entertainment and, and such. But um, this is really, really interesting. And I'm, and I'm thankful that you guys talked to us about the, the deals of investing in film. Um, all your contact information will be in the show notes so people can you know, go in and connect with you directly. Any last thoughts before we say goodbye? No, I appreciate you having uh, having us on the show. We're uh, really excited to get Expressify out there, and uh, I think there's a ton of opportunity, you know, to invest in the next generation of content. Cool. All right, James. Thanks for coming on the show, fellow deal makers in the audience. As always, reach out to our guests, especially if you have an interest in what they're doing. You could ask questions. You could connect with them. You could even participate in in what they're looking to do. Uh, So all their contact information will be in the show notes. If you have a deal that you would like to talk about here on The Deal Scout, head over to thedealscout.com, fill out a quick form, and we'll get you on the show next. Till then, we will talk with you all on the next episode. Goodbye, everybody.